Today on Anything Interesting. Uh, we're also looking at two casks right in front of us. What What is in the casks over here? We're in San Jose, California to check out a local craft brewery. They realized Stand Up was a bad name. They need to sit down. Came in here, we're like, whoa, this is awesome. It was very sad that we had to actually do it, but uh, I was very proud of uh, San Jose. We're having a fun time. We're all friends here. Hey y'all, it's Grayson and we're here in San Jose, right down the street from the ice hockey rink and the San Jose State University Spartan Stadium. And we're visiting Strike Brewery. Now this place was founded by three friends who combined their love of sports and beer to create what we see behind us. Now they wanted to make a beer that they could enjoy without diminishing their ability at sports. So they started out making some fine session brews. Since then they've expanded to some awesome seasonal and small batch varieties. Let's go take a taste. Hi, my name is Kristen Wandrick and I'm the taproom associate here at Strike Brewing Company. I've been here for about seven to eight months and I'm kind of a self-declared beer nerd. Not only can Kristen tell you great stories about beer, but she can recommend you the perfect kind for any occasion. Like our triple, it does have a lot of those guava, passion fruity notes that the two team does too. Yeah. So that's why it's so dangerous because at 10.8% people think that they can drink a lot or they really enjoy the taste and they want to just keep drinking it and then all of a sudden they stand up and they realize stand up was a bad name, they need to sit down. <laughs> so that's why you know it comes with that warning of like, hey, it's Friday. If you're looking for a good Friday beer and you're not working Saturday, go for the triple. And beer is my hobby. I like to read about it. I like to learn new things. So it's fun working in an environment where people are helping you grow into your love of the beer. Yeah. The co-founders of Strike Brewing Company, Jenny and Drew, use their love of sports as inspiration for the branding of their company. And uh, Jenny, where does the strike come in with the brewery? So the name Strike comes from the fact that my now husband, used to, uh, still is best friends with our brewmaster, they met playing baseball. They were both pitchers. Strikes are a good thing. It's also a very simple spell, easy to remember word with a lot of meaning. So it resonates differently with everyone who hears it. So. I'm a huge baseball fan, so is he, so we had no idea this place was all baseball themed. We came in here, we're like, whoa, this is awesome. We've, I mean, we've been coming here on the regular ever since, so it's delicious. And you guys had an awesome journey. Started as a homebrew, then you're doing contracting, 2014, opened up this space. What's the biggest change that you've noticed having this space available? We're able to control everything, the, the ordering of ingredients, the what goes into the tank, when it goes in, and when it comes out. I mean, all, everything is under our control, and that's an awesome aspect of having our own brick and mortar facility. Strike Brewing Company ships out over 1,000 cases every week. Pretty impressive for a company with only 12 employees. I, I gotta ask you about the triple IPA. So IPAs are one of my favorites. Your triple, I've never tasted anything quite Thank like you. it. What makes it different? One of our brewers, Ryan Bridge, came up with that one. It is a fantastic recipe. It's part of our bullpen series. We come out with new beers roughly every quarter, and this was uh, our first quarter beer. And uh, basically, once it's gone, it's gone. And we're going to tell people to start looking forward to the next one that we're bringing out. When it's gone, it's gone. We made it once. We will probably never make it again. No. So you got to come back for the next bullpen and see what that one's going to be. Oh, so, that hurts yeah. me in my heart. That's kind of the point. <laughs> we oh. want you coming back for more. <laughs> okay. We're also looking at two casks right in front of us. So what, what is in the casks over here? What are we going to expect? What we're trying to do is we're going to be souring some beer. What happens is in typical uh, beer fashion, we, we ferment with yeast. When you sour a beer, you start to use lacto and pediococcus, which actually will create a sour flavor. So um, it's a very pervasive uh, uh, bug, if you will. So we like to not use it in our fermenters where we make all our other stuff. So we put them in barrels so that we can actually uh, get those flavors into there without uh, ruining the rest of our brewery. <laughs> So will these be kind of small batch brews? Uh, they'll be a very small batch, and they actually take quite a bit of time, uh, all the way up to a year, maybe a year and a half. It takes, they're very slow fermenting uh, yeast, so uh, it, it takes a while for those to 
get the flavors that we're looking for, so we're always testing and making sure they're going in the right direction. And then once we feel that they're at the right point in time, we'll uh, package them off and start to sell them. So let me ask you, you guys started off making session brews. Why is a session beer so important for an athlete or someone who lives or works nearby? Because you can have more than one and still safely drive. Session beer means that it's under 5% alcohol. The whole term comes from the English who would sit down and have a session of drinking. I mean, that's, that's where the term comes from. But it really just means lower in alcohol so you can have more and enjoy them for a longer period of time. I noticed that you guys do a ton of local community events. You have groups coming out here all the time. You guys just did a huge event a couple weeks ago. Can you tell me about that event? We hosted a benefit for the San Jose Flood Relief Fund. After all the crazy flooding with the weather we had, um, that happened and about two weeks later, we put together an event that uh, was based here but included all the local breweries. Uh, so we had like a silent auction, some other ways to donate money and then a percentage of all the proceeds from all the different tap rooms went to the flood relief. Radio station KFOX was here broadcasting so we were very happy with the support of the community and the amount of people that came out. It was very sad that we had to actually do it but uh, I was very proud of uh, San Jose and, and, uh, and the amount of support that they showed for that. So we raised about $5,000 between all of us. That's awesome. And you guys are hoping to do this regularly, right? We want to make that an annual event and dedicate the money to a different cause each year, depending on what's going on. Not only did Strike help out the community, but the community helped them out too. Back in 2014, Strike managed to successfully raise over $20,000 on Kickstarter in an effort to build their current tap room. Some of those donors have their names proudly displayed on the Strike Wall of Fame and are members of the exclusive Mug Club. So do you have any cool events coming up that people might want to go check out? Uh, we do a huge number of festivals every summer. I mean, every weekend is something. Uh, we'll be having our third anniversary party here in October. So it's the second Saturday of October. Save that date. That's always a fun event. Okay, so I saw a funny post on your Twitter. It said, pairing beer with Girl Scout cookies. We did. Question mark. We did that. Please tell me about that. So the Girl Scouts teamed up with, I think, three or four local breweries and did an event different Saturdays. Ours happened to fall during San Francisco Beer Week, which just ended. So they came in, they picked four of our beers and four of their cookies. And everyone who came in um, basically got a flight of beer and a flight of cookies, and they could <laughs> try only... them all. So it was just kind of a fun day, and we donated a portion of the proceeds back to the Girl Scouts. That's awesome. There's one cookie that people care about. Thin the mint. mint. Yeah, We didn't exactly. do that one. <laughs> Next year we will. If somebody's coming through for the first time, what's something that you would want them to know? Uh, we're open Wednesday through Sunday to the public. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday is 4 to 8, Friday is 3 to 9, Saturday 1 to 9, Sunday 1 to 7. About every other, every once a month, every Sunday we do trivia. It's a fantastic event. We have a girl who writes all the trivia questions herself and it's super fun. Um, every Friday and some Saturdays, especially through the summer, we bring in food trucks. If we don't have a food truck on site, you're welcome to bring in your own food and have a picnic. So those are some questions we get asked a lot. So. You can bring your own food in, just a sandwich yep. or a steak or something. Order a Costco pizza from down the street, whatever you want. We don't care, we don't touch the food, we are not a restaurant. <laughs> We've got a cool vibe, a little bit noisy, but you know, you have the authenticity of all the bats back here and the beer is always on point. It's delicious, never had a bad one. I mean, I just want people to know about beer, good beer, how it's made. You know, we're more than happy to give people tours and teach them as much as they don't know uh, about the process of making beer because it's it's so much more enjoyable to taste a product knowing how it's done seeing how it's done well folks it's about four o'clock on a friday we're drinking beer i'm happy jenny thank you so much for sitting down with thank me you. well drew thank you so much for sitting down with yeah, us and cheers. Tell us about beer cheers yeah Wow, what can I say folks, what an amazing brewery. Uh, everything about this place, from the brews to the people to the atmosphere, all speaks to good times and good drink. If you are a craft brewery fan and you haven't visited Strike Brewery, it's right here in San Jose, now's the time to change it. Come on down and try something. It's delicious, you'll enjoy it. Thanks for visiting, we'll see y'all next time. Hey Taylor, what's something you've learned while filming? We can always film more no matter how much we think we did. How about you? I learned how time consuming and expensive it is to film one of these episodes. 
This isn't our full-time job and we are far from rich. I work in admin. I drive for Lyft. And if you like our videos and you want us to keep checking out neat locations, inspiring people, and exciting events, visit us on Patreon and toss us a few bucks each month. It'll help us do more videos, go to cooler places, and improve our equipment. That means we don't have to build any more equipment out of PVC pipe. Just a dollar each month will go a long, long way. We're bored. Uh, so we can go where you want us to. Like the Roswell Alien Museum? Sure. Or how about the only diamond mine in North America? Well, we've actually been there before. We didn't have a show at the time. Or but... even the Panama Canal. That's a bit of a longer drive, but yeah, we can go there. And we've always talked about going to South Korea. Okay, bring it back to reality. All right, what about 